Hello everybody, and welcome back to Creation Myths. I have a new creation myth for you today. Today we are going to talk about the claim that information requires intelligence. I have both of those words in quotes because creationists often have a tough time defining each of those terms in any kind of specific way. I'm not going to belabor the point as we go through this claim, but I just want to make that clear off the top. The creationist claim here is some variant of the idea that information must come from an intelligent source, and it's never going to come from a, you know, a naturalistic or a non-directed process. An example of this we can see from creation.com, that's Creation Ministries International, in an article called Lost in Translation. They're talking about the genetic code. Uh, they say the genetic information code points to an intelligent source. They specifically say, if you look at the part highlighted in red down here, they say information is non-material. It is a metaphysical entity and has only been observed to be derived from an intelligent source. And it's that last part that is key. Only been observed to be derived from an intelligent source. We also have Dr. Stephen Meyer from Discovery Institute saying basically the same thing in this video from December of 2021. I will let him explain in his own words. Now, what we know from our uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning about the past, is that information, especially in a digital form, always comes from an intelligent source, whether we're talking about a paragraph in a book or a section of software, or a hieroglyphic inscription, or even information embedded in a radio signal. Whenever we see information and we trace it back to its ultimate source, we inevitably find a mind, not a material process. So the claim there from Dr. Meyer is that information always comes from an intelligent source. Those are his words. So let's see why creationists are wrong about this. The reason is that information doesn't have to come from an intelligent source. That's it. That's the counter-argument. We have direct experiments that show you can generate functional biological information from non-directed processes, which is to say, without an intelligent source. I have two papers to show you that back up this claim. The first is Nimi et al. from 2017. Random sequences are an abundant source of bioactive RNAs or peptides. In this experiment, they generated random RNA or polypeptide sequences and found that a whole bunch of those randomly generated sequences will have some biochemical activity, which is to say they will contain biological information. The second study is from Yona et al. It's from 2018. Random sequences rapidly evolve into de novo promoters. This experiment is super cool. What they did is took the LAC promoter, which is a regulatory region uh, to express the genes uh, that are needed in bacteria to digest lactose. So they took the regulatory region called a promoter. It's about 100 nucleotides long. They removed it and replaced it with 100 random nucleotides. They did that a whole bunch of times. Initially, about 10% of those random 100 nucleotides could act as a functional LAC promoter. With one mutation, the vast majority of those randomly generated sequences could function as a LAC promoter. Randomly generated sequences and mutation are undirected processes, again showing that you can get biological information without an intelligent source. Creationists, of course, have responded to the counter-arguments for their claim. Uh, the most common thing they will say is, well, those experiments were intelligently designed. But that doesn't get around the problem. Of course, the experiments were designed, but in order for creationists to be right that the experiments don't show what I just said they show, they need to demonstrate that the sequences that were generated in those experiments were predetermined somewhere in the methods. So, creationist, show me. You have the methods. I link the experiments down below. Go through the methods and show me where those sequences, the specific sequences that they found with biochemical activity, show me in those methods where those sequences are predetermined. That's what you need to do in order for this supposed rebuttal to make sense. But you can't do that because the sequences were not predetermined. They were the result of undirected processes. The other thing creationists will say here is, well, that's not information. Um, yes, it is. 
that's exactly the type of information you're talking about. We're talking about nucleotide sequences and peptide sequences. When Dr. Meyer, in that little clip I showed you, when he talks about digital information, he's talking about nucleotide sequences. This is exactly the kind of information that creationists are talking about. So in summary, creationists claim that genetic information can only come from an intelligent source, but experiments directly show that this claim is false. It's not more complicated than that. It's been directly refuted. Creationist attempts to rebut these experimental results fail. They just are unable to refute these experiments, and therefore their claim is false. So does information require intelligence in biological systems? No. That is a creation myth. Thank you for watching. Don't get fooled.